hey, welcome back to the series that we've been doing on Evermore. I've been going track by track to see if I can find a deeper meaning within each of the songs. Today we're on track five, which is titled Tolerate It. So now that I'm on my fourth Taylor Swift album, I do know that track five typically means that it is probably the most gut-wrenching song. So I am going into the song expecting a lot of turmoil or heartbreak. So let's just get started. I've only heard a piano so far and it already kind of makes me a little bit nervous. I sit and watch you beating with your head low. I wake and watch you breathing with your eyes closed. I sit and watch you and notice everything you do. So much older and wiser and I So before we get too far, let me read those first couple lyrics. It said, I sit and watch you reading with your head low. I wake and watch you breathing with your eyes closed. I sit and watch you. I notice everything you do or don't do. You're so much older and wiser. So that first verse makes me think that she knows this person very well. Like she's very keen on every detail that they do. So she would notice if something's off with the person. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking so far. And I don't know where she's going with you're so much older and wiser. Maybe this is another unequal relationship. I know she kind of touched on that topic with like all too well with like Jake Gyllenhaal, someone who was older than her. So maybe it's going into another relationship like that. I think I think all too well said something along the lines of like her waiting by the door at her 21st birthday, like a kid. Maybe so. Use my best colors for your portrait. Lay the table with the fancy shit. And watch you tolerate it. If it's all in my head, tell me now. Tell me I've got it wrong somehow. I know my love should be celebrated. But you tolerate it. Oof, I didn't know where that was gonna go, but oof. Uh, my first thoughts is like, this is a complete feeling of indifference. If you go back to some of the lyrics that she said, um, use my best colors for your portrait, lay the table with the fancy shit and watch you tolerate it. If it's all in my head, tell me now. Tell me I've got it wrong somehow. I know my love should be celebrated, but you tolerate it. So she's going through her head and trying to notice all of the signs that this person is maybe giving that they don't really care about their relationship or certain things that are going on in their lives. And she's saying that she doesn't know if it's all in her head, if she's making up the scenario, or are these little details that she's picking up signs of this person like almost withdrawing from the relationship. And this reminds me of another song. Um, I don't remember which one it was, but there was a Midnight song where she said, uh, something along the lines of the slowest way to hurt someone is not loving them enough. And I feel like that's how she's feeling in this relationship. It was the opposite. Because I think in the Midnight Song, she was saying that she was the person not giving that person that unequivocal cool, like love. Um, but on this scenario, it seems like she's on the opposite end of that where she doesn't feel like this person even cares about her, I guess. So that's kind of what I'm thinking so far. With the battle heroes, welcome. I take your indiscretions all in good fun. I sit and listen. I polish plates until they gleam and glisten. You're so much older and wiser and I that verse also had a lot to unpack there as well um it says i greet you with the battle heroes welcome i take your in i take your indiscretions all in good fun i sit and listen i polish plates until they gleam and glisten you're so much older and wiser to me a battle heroes welcome is someone coming home from like a war or a battle and it's nothing but happiness so she's saying that she always greets this person with the most upbeat attitude. Like she's excited to see this person. All she kind of gets in return is like taking someone's indiscretions. That kind of makes me think of cheating. 
But I know indiscretions can also be a little bit more lighthearted, or it could just be something like careless along the lines of like not consulting their partner on something. Like it doesn't always have to go to like cheating or something, but that's my first thoughts when I hear that word. Um, and then another interesting lyric was I polish plates until they gleam and glisten. I don't want to sound stereotypical, but I wonder if she's kind of referring to herself almost in a way of like a housewife. But that's kind of the picture that she's painting in my head because someone that's waiting at home just to greet you with the most enthusiastic smile and then also they're polishing plates. It kind of makes me think of someone in a kitchen. So it kind of just makes me seem like it's just someone who's waiting for this person to come home because they're like the most important person in their life. And all they get from that person is maybe a cheater or just someone that just doesn't take their feelings into account when that person's their whole world. So hey, so this is some post recording thoughts I had as I was editing this. And I was talking about the whole housewife thing. And I also realized that I think the reason why that came to my head, and it really wasn't a housewife, but I was thinking back to the all too well short film where that's kind of the picture that she exactly painted. It was uh, when Sadie Sink was arguing with um, the guy in the video. She was like polishing those plates after that dinner. So I think that's also what I was thinking of at the time of recording that. So some added perspective on that, but <laughs> let's go on with the normal video. While you were out building other worlds, where was I? Wow, that's that's intense. But that makes me think of, again, cheating. <laughs> I think I'm taking this too far, but indiscretions and then someone building other worlds, either they're making a life outside of you or they have a secret family. I don't know which one, but they are definitely doing something when they're always out. Man who throw blankets over my barbed wire I made you my temple, my mirror, my sky Footnotes in the story of your life Drawing hearts in the byline Always taking up too much space or time You assume I'm fine But what would you do if I Who hurt you, Taylor Swift? Oh my god! Um, let me read that. This insane bridge said, While you were out building other worlds, where was I? Where's that man who threw blankets over my barbed wire? I made you my temple, my mural, and my sky. Now I'm begging for footnotes in the story of your life, drawing hearts on the byline, always taking up too much space or time. You assume I'm fine, but what would you do if I, going out on a limb and like died or lied or something like that? The first line about throwing blankets over barbed wire, that kind of makes me think of someone gaslighting or just telling you like, it's fine. It's fine. Like any situation, you're like, you're reading too much into it. It's fine. Like just calm down. That kind of is like exactly what throwing blankets over barbed wire. Maybe this person is bringing up very real problems. And all you're saying is like, uh, no, it's fine. Like if you cover it up, it's not there. Out of sight, out of mind, kind of. Then I made you my temple, my mural, my sky. And now I'm begging for footnotes in the story of your life. As if that's not like one of the most like heartbreaking lyrics ever. It reminds me of another, um, I think it was an all too well. She said something along the lines of like, I kept you like an oath, but you kept me like a secret or something. And that kind of remi reminds me of that where she's saying like this person is her literal entire world. To him, it's still kind of like that feeling of indifference that I kind of mentioned earlier. I think the most interesting part was the footnotes in the story of your life. Because if you think about footnotes in like a thesis paper or something like that, it's like it's like that added detail that you go for context, but it's not a part of like the main story. Like it wasn't. I don't want to say good enough, but it wasn't enough to make it into the paragraph. It's something that if you want to go seek out more information, you kind of can. And that's like a perfect analogy to this person in her life where she is such a small part of his life that it's almost in the end credits. It's not even like a worthwhile part to even visit in that paper, let alone like the life of that person. So that has to be nothing short of absolutely devastating if that's your story with that person. And then drawing hearts in the byline, going back to like a thesis paper or something like that or like a newspaper article, I guess. Even though she's not a very big part of this person's life, she, she still seems like she's that person's biggest fan. 
because she's drawing hearts saying like, I still support you maybe in a way. But I think this was the perfect evidence to show that she really doesn't play when it comes to those track fives. And then it's still going. Like she just said, break free and leave us in ruins. Took this dagger in me and removed it. Gain the weight of you, then lose it. Believe me, I can do it. So with those lyrics, it's kind of just saying that she's going through such a tough time with this breakup or losing this person. And like some people would say like it's a weight off your shoulders. But for her, she gained that weight the way that she wanted. Now she's going back to just being her. I keep making parallels to All Too Well, but I feel like there's such a very similar storyline in this because i think even in the 10 minute version of that song it said something about losing weight a soldier losing weight or something and then this song they said the battle hero and this is another thing about like losing the weight of that person or the situation that you're in so i definitely think these songs are connected in some sort of way All in my head, tell me now tell me i've got it wrong somehow That was absolutely insane. Um, but that was the end of Tolerate It. Definitely worthy of the track five slotting. I, I still can't get over the lyric about the footnotes in the story of the life because I don't know if I really said it when I said it a couple minutes ago. But another meaning to that to me is like, I am I want you to remember me. Like, again, footnotes are added details at the end of something. And it's like, even if I'm in that small part of your life, at least you acknowledged me. And even though that's a very bare minimum, it's like still something that she wants. So I don't know. It's going to take me a while, to, I feel like, to fully process this one just because I feel like there was so much in it, even though it was only, I say only, but it was four minutes long, but it was still so much going on. I think these are the types of songs that really make the format that I make videos in worthwhile a little bit to me because if I would have done a whole one video about this album, it, I would never get my thoughts out because it's so crazy. So I know sometimes it's probably annoying that I drag these out, I guess, by making each song a video, but this is where it's worth it, I think. So uh, thank you for watching. Let me know if there's any perspective or anything I'm missing in the song. I'm sure there are. This one was definitely rich with detail. So let me know, but thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.